Hi guys, just before we start the episode today, whatever platform you are listening to this on, whether it be on the podcast, uh, Apple podcast, YouTube, whatever it is, please support it. Please like, subscribe, whatever you can do. We want to reach as many people as possible. So please do that and we'll get right into the episode. Welcome to another episode of the Chronic Comeback Podcast. Today, I am really happy and excited to have on the show Nikki Little. So Nikki became sick at such a young age uh, when she was actually 14. And even from such a young age, which she'll go on to talk to us about, she actually began studying holistic health. She tried every supplement, diet, and physical healing modality you can think of. Um, I'm sure this sounds familiar. It certainly does for me. Um, But it wasn't until she began working on stress and trauma that she began to see true healing. Um, And I think this is really, this is just such an amazing, not amazing, but like such a a powerful thing for me personally to hear. And I, I know for a lot of people listening, because I think this is a common thing that we're seeing a lot on the podcast. So I'm uh, really excited to have you on, Nikki. Thank you so much for coming on. How, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I, I think we, we spoke about just before we started recording. I'm pretty sure I've had COVID this week for a second time. So I've been taken down. But today uh, I've I focused massively on my sleep. So today I'm feeling normal. So uh, normal-ish. Um, <laughs> So um, if we could go back to like before I I said, you know, it was 14 when everything started to happen for you. Um, If we could talk about a little bit before what life was like before then, did you have any health conditions or anything before then? What was health like for you before 14? Sure. So before I was 14, I was very active. I did every sport from soccer to even playing football with the boys outside. And I was constantly active and, I didn't really have any symptoms. I could eat whatever I wanted. I had great health. I felt fine all the time. And yeah, so things were pretty normal and it really hit me like a bus out of nowhere at 14. (laughs) And and what's what, when you say hit you like a bus, what what actually happened uh, at that time? So I I actually remember um, being outside and I did get bit by a tick. And that was, I think around 14 or 12 and I didn't tell anyone because I, I didn't know I didn't even know what a tick was yeah. so I was like oh it's okay it's a bug it bit me and I kind of went on with my life but um I I was trying out for track in school and I run all the time and all of a sudden I started to just get really fatigued and I actually passed out and then from there my symptoms came within kind of like a week it was crazy I had digestive issues memory loss fatigue I had incredibly bad eczema all over my body and it was just it was terrible I lost 35 pounds in like two months it was a it was a really big change for me at that age and and did you so it was essentially two years earlier that you'd had a tick bite is that yeah and and so I'm, I'm assuming you your parents or you know your family were like immediately concerned about this and they were was it were they like taking you to doctors like what what happened yes so they took me to the doctor my mom did and they diagnosed me with pcos uh polycystic ovarian syndrome because i had a lot of issues with my cycle and Um, i had so much pain around my periods that i had to stop going to school completely uh when when i was on my period and then chronic fatigue syndrome as well and lyme disease all within together and I was like whoa this is a lot so they got so they got to the diagnosis of Lyme disease pretty much straight away yes okay okay so that I I, at least that's I don't want to say a positive but I guess sometimes some some uh, people can uh, take a long time to get to that diagnosis were were you at that point were you relieved that you had some diagnosis to and, and something to work with yeah I was relieved because I felt that um everyone thought I was Kind of going crazy a little bit I was like this is wrong with me this is happening they're like no 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 you're just having a bad day and I was like no I promise like there's something wrong and nobody nobody believed me my parents didn't believe me they thought I was just wanting to miss school I had uh, teachers telling me and in, in front of everybody in the class hey like why are you missing so much school I was like I, there's something wrong I'm telling you and finally to get that diagnosis I was like oh my gosh okay I'm not crazy this is, yeah. this is great yeah 
and, and how, how long did that period of time go on for where you were, because they, you get, you go through stages when you're with chronic, what chronic illness, where you, you know, something's wrong with you, but no one else, there's no confirmation of that. And from the externally. And so how long was that going on for that? You had the symptoms, but you didn't have confirmation from a doctor to say, like, how long was that? How long did that take? I want to say that that was, that actually did take a little bit. Um, PCOS was was a quicker thing to figure out, but Lyme disease now, because my mom had me, she she asked them to test me for it because she had a suspicion. But that was like when I was 16, so that actually did take about two years. So it was it was a while of not knowing what the heck was going on with me, and it was really confusing. <laughs> oh wow, sorry. I thought when you said initially, I was like, oh, you got an, an immediate, almost an immediate time. Two yeah. years when you've. God, and that's that's uh, between 14 and 16, you're growing up so much at that point. Um, and particularly if you're someone who's active, there's a lot, you know, I imagine you were very active in a lot of sports teams. Uh, you know, you can't put rest in that. What was life like at school? Were you able to even go to school? I was able to go to school sometimes, but I, I got to a point where I wasn't able to walk to my classes anymore because my classes were upstairs and to get upstairs was just really hard on my body. Um, I, I looked completely different. I went from looking a certain way at the start of the year and then my face had completely like sunken in from all the weight that I lost. And I just, I had to lay down on the floor to get to class. I had to take naps, like just wherever I could because I just couldn't go anymore. So it started to really get bad and I wasn't, I just wanted to kind of shut down and shut everyone out. Relationships really suffered too during that time. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask you, like, how did you, how are you dealing with this emotionally? Because I, I know, like, obviously at that age as well, you're, you're going through puberty, right? And like, you're going through all these hormones are happening anyway. And it's a stressful time anyway, and an emotional time, uh, particularly as a female. And you're then going through this as well. Was it, is it incredibly upsetting for you at that time? Yeah, very. I actually was in a relationship uh, during that time, during high school, and he didn't know what was wrong with me, and he thought I was just kind of going crazy, and then I had a lot of people kind of accusing me of anorexia, and I was like, no, I'm I'm eating. I'm just not absorbing my food for whatever reason, and yeah, I felt really, I felt really alone. Um, my sister actually was going through almost the same thing as me. And she's about three years older than me. So we had each other at least, but I definitely got really depressed during that time and started to kind of give up. <laughs> and she, she was going through the same symptoms and, and stuff as well. Sort of, a little bit. She didn't have any Lyme symptoms. Um, she just had really intense eczema. Like that was her, her number one thing she was dealing with was her skin. Right. But she had to do like the same diet stuff as me and she was kind of going through the same process. And so you got to the point so two years later uh you go to you, you get a diagnosis of I mean chronic fatigue is I guess it's something that people like to slap onto some people just a, a label that people slap onto people just you know if they're not sure what's going on I guess with Lyme did you it took two years for them to to, to do a test and that was because your mum told them to yeah, now I'm because I was kind of getting the timeline a little confused because so much was happening. But yeah, I know I now remember I was 16 was Lyme and then around 14 was PCOS. But we had like a feeling that maybe something was wrong before that, but we just didn't have like the the blood test and the diagnosis till 16. Yeah. And was it with a like in in the UK we call them GPs like general practitioners like was, was it with just like a local doctor or did you have to go to a Lyme specific doctor? So I went to a local doctor and then I was also seeing a like uh, alternative holistic practitioner as well. Okay. What, what made you go start to go down that route, more of the holistic route? So when I started, when I was 14 and I started having these issues, I actually at that time completely changed my diet. I started learning about stuff. I even started learning under an acupuncturist um, just about herbs and stuff because I was so interested in it. And then my mom suggested to go to a naturopath because she had some friends that had a son that had similar symptoms to me and they went. So that's when I was like, okay, well, we'll do that. And then I went and saw, saw them for a while. And that's a whole nother, <laughs> it was a lot of money spent. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, at such a young age to, have, to, have, to, to think to do that as well, because I mean, I was in my 
I was in my twenties when this started happening and I still for quite a while started to, I was keen for someone to give me a, a, a pill and get it to go away. Um, was the, what, what was it about the holistic route that made you think that, you know, oh, this is actually makes more sense to me? Uh, just, just from the research, like from the moment I would wake up in the morning, I would be reading all day. Even if I was going to school, I was, I wasn't doing my schoolwork. I was on my phone researching <laughs> chronic illness because I wanted to know what the heck was going on with me. And yeah. it just made sense. It just made sense. So I stuck with it. And, and when you got the Lyme diagnosis, what was the, so what was the plan from then, from then onwards? What, what did you do then? Yeah. So she told me that I needed to go see a, a disease specialist. And I, at that point from my research and seeing people with Lyme disease go on antibiotics and usually it, it made people worse for some people it helped, yeah. but that's also for people that catch it really soon. And I didn't catch it really soon. So mine was chronic at that point. I decided to not go on antibiotics. I decided to just go to the holistic route and see my naturopath and see our plan. And there was like a, there's a supplement protocol for it, but I don't really think that it works because <laughs> I tried a lot of different things, but that was one thing that we did try was supplements. Mm -hmm. what, what, what was the supplement? Cause I've tried many myself. Uh, what was the supplement pro protocol? Yeah. So the supplement protocol was basically killing the Lyme and it was just like different herbs and things like cat's claw, a bunch of random things. Right. And I, I don't find that it works because I think it's so much deeper than that. It's not just killing it off. There's, there's a reason why your body's not getting rid of it. And it's not like, I don't think it's a kill, kill, kill thing. I think it's a, you need to get your body to release it. Yeah. But, so I did those supplements and really all it did was make me worse. Like I developed more conditions and more symptoms after doing them and it never, never got anywhere. So it was like a vicious cycle of just supplements and supplements. Do you, do you think, cause I think I'm the same. Um, God, I could, I could, I could send three children to a uh, private school on, on the, the amount of, uh, yeah. the amount I've spent, <laughs> the amount of, <laughs> it's insane. Um, but do you, so do you think that actually, it's, it's what it is, is about your, it's getting your body to do what it's naturally meant to do, as opposed to getting something to uh, fake to do it, essentially. Yeah, because I think that, and I think maybe in some cases that works for certain people, but I think, well, I know our bodies are designed to heal and that like some people might not have access to a supplement. Does that mean they're not gonna heal from Lyme disease? No, I think that we need to remove the blockages that are causing us not to heal, but I really, really believe that our bodies are meant to heal and that we don't need to take a, a bajillion supplements to do that. Okay. I think it is a waste of money because I mean, if they worked, so many people would be doing so much better with chronic illness. I think they can help assist because I, I still do take certain things, but I don't think supplements are the end all be all by any means. I, I agree. And, uh, yeah, I want to talk more about that later because, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very interesting subject, but I want to, let's get back into your story. Um, yeah. So, so you went on the, um, the protocol, it didn't, didn't work. Um, how, how old were you when you got to the end of this protocol and you, you, you realized that, that that didn't work? Were you still 16 or? Um, I want to say I started doing the protocols when I was 16 and then I would say 18, I threw in the towel with the naturopath. I was done because I had done acupuncture, colon hydrotherapy, which is not a pleasant experience. <laughs> by yeah. Any I, I, I I tried, yeah, crazy things like that. And sometimes those things are helpful, but I, I tried all that. And then after a certain point, I think my mom, cause she was supporting me, um, paying for everything. And we we're just like, okay, this is, this is, this isn't working. So yeah. we didn't really know what to do at that point. Okay what what did what what did you do then what what was the what was the next thing you could you could think of because i think quite often what happens is you just you roll from one thing to another don't you and you yeah. someone you meet someone new and they're like okay well this worked and you were like okay well i have to try that and then yeah. like that is is that how it was working for you or was it it sounds like you did a lot of research so maybe did you do some more research so sorry my i can hear the dog's going crazy um it's okay I don't know if that's Okay. Well, at that point, I honestly had decided that 
this is a bit of a trigger warning, but I, I gave up. I was, I was planning my suicide actually, because I was so, so sick and I didn't feel like myself. I felt like I was, I was watching myself outside of my body. I was so sick. I was just watching myself die. So I started actually planning, planning that. And um, when I was about to go through with that, I actually got a call from a friend and they told me, Hey, I hope that you're holding on because there's so much more for you. And that was like a sign to me. And I stopped. I was like, okay, I'm not doing this. I'm not going through with this. Wow. And because the notes were written, I was, I was on my way out. I was, I didn't want to be here anymore. That's how much physical pain and mental pain, all the illness had caused me. So I was like, okay, I can't give up, I guess. I got to I got to start looking and then then I opened the door to trauma. Wow. Uh phew. it's uh, <laughs> it's, made, it's made the hair stand on my stand up on my arm, on my arms. Um wow, with your your friend are you still friends with that friend now? Yes. Yeah, what a friend. Um can, <laughs> clapping your friend uh, that's that's amazing i'm assuming you told them the impact they had that yes. <laughs> wow um, you stopped me from doing something that i could couldn't take back yeah um god there's a dog barking here as well so sorry if you can hear that um, <laughs> um wow so i i, I think it well first of all it's amazing that you were able to like pay attention to that um like essentially I know it's your friend but the universe just doing that at the right time something must have just some there must have been something that must have thought made her think I need to tell her this now because she needs to know it now yeah. um and so <laughs> yeah what, what 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 so what happened then like what you were I guess that was rock bottom for you like wh where where was it next yeah so I turned my car around and I went home and I just gave myself time to, to cry and let everything out and all the feelings and emotions that I was having. And after that, I just really started learning about trauma and researching that. It kind of just came to me. Um, it has a funny way of doing that when you need it at the right time, the things that you need, it'll just kind of appear to you. And I started learning a lot about somatic experiencing and I didn't really get into it until this year. This was the year that all the symptoms started kind of falling off for me. So it took a bit, but that's when I started actually like getting into it more. Okay. You're going to have to tell us a little bit more about what that means. What, so what does, so what does somatic, I have heard of somatic experiences or somatic, like, can you tell us what that is and how that relates to chronic health and, and, and yeah. trauma? Okay. So the first, the first thing I will say that I tried was something called emotion code and emotion release. Have you heard of that? Is that a, a, like tapping emotion freedom technique? Is that the same there's thing? Something, there's something like that. And then there's something where it's like, I don't know exactly how it works, but I, I saw a lady for it for a while. And this was the first thing that I tried when I started getting into emotional stuff besides talk therapy, but mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like they test your body with muscle testing and ah. you, yeah yeah, you yeah. You where an emotion is trapped inside your body and then the physical things that come with that okay yeah is um oh what uh, like it can he is it it's linked to like kinesiology like, i think i think so i have a book yeah. on it and i think that that was mentioned in the book okay. but mm -hmm, okay. i tried that for a while and yeah it kind of helped a little bit well, I, I saw the ideologist where they did, uh, I actually went out to America where um, they muscle tested and, and gave me supplements based on that. But it was all about giving me supplements again. Um, so it wasn't about trauma and, and, and stuff. So you went to see that person. Uh, how soon after you know, your rock bottom experience were you seeing that, that person? I saw them the same day, actually. Yeah. How? wow okay so the, the holistic place i was going to i was the lady that had talked to me was the lady that i was she was, i'm friends with her and she was at the holistic place uh -huh. and I, I stopped by there on after the phone call and then i went home and gave myself time but i did go there and that's kind of like she she told me a little bit about emotion code because before they had been telling me hey maybe some of these symptoms are emotional but i was like mm, i don't yeah. think that that has any correlation but i i did i did talk to her i didn't have a session with her but i i did see the lady that i started seeing the same day when i, when I was planning on 
you know, <laughs> leaving the world. Right. So I did, I did see her, but then after, I think it was like a week after I had my first session with her and then I started seeing her consistently and I started seeing a, a bit of changes in my health, but it wasn't enough for me to continue doing emotion coding. Okay. Was there still, was there still a big part of you that was, okay, I need to work on the emotional side of things, but also I've still got Lyme disease. How am I going to get rid of that? Or were you like, no, this is the key. This will help me, uh, my body deal with Lyme disease. So there was a really big part of me that was more hung up on the physical Lyme disease part of it and not thinking, I thought maybe emotion, I was like, okay, maybe that's why my stomach hurts or maybe this is why I feel this way. But I did not at the time think that that was going to be the cause of why I was able, not able to get rid of Lyme disease. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of blows my my mind as well. Um, and so you, you, you saw that person to a point and it helped, sorry, she helped you to a point. Um, what did you do then? So at this time I stopped doing, I just kind of was doing at home practices of what I had learned. Mm -hmm. And then I got really deep be before I went into like somatic experiencing and actually trauma work. I got really, really deep into, uh, diet still and supplements still thinking that that was my key mm. um it was like something i couldn't let go of i wanted to control that aspect because i really really thought that that was going to be the biggest part of it and actually ended up getting really really bad orthorexia from trying to control my diet so much and i had to like really work through letting that go um before i could get into the real healing because that's that's something i i realize a lot of people with chronic illness they try the diet thing and they usually you know, end up coming out with orthorexia or scared of food because we're told that all these foods are bad for certain chronic illnesses. So that was, that was a really big piece at first. I've never heard of that before. Orthorexia. What, what, what is that? So orthorexia is where you are, you're actually really afraid of eating certain foods because you're afraid it's going to cause a symptom. Yeah. It's like clean eating, but clean eating, amplified like to the extent where you don't need to be eating that clean like it's it's too much right yeah, it's like I, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can completely see how that becomes a thing with you know chronic illness i mean i guess i've got an element of it myself um because you you know you, and you feel guilty if you eat something that you probably maybe yeah. shouldn't have um and and you felt like you needed to let go of that before you could actually really start the trauma work yeah, because it's it's really hard to when you are you have to control your diet so much and I couldn't go out to eat for five years because I was so afraid of eating accidentally eating bread or something that I wasn't supposed to have in my diet and it really it's depressing not to be able to enjoy food. So a part of, you know, releasing that I think is really important. It's it's really healing to that because food is just like it's a comfort. Yeah. And to not be able to enjoy food is really hard emotionally. So I, I really felt like I need to let that go in order to heal. Okay. So at that point, did you just decide I can eat whatever I want or you were like, I'm going to be a little bit better or like, what was the decision you made? It was like, I'm going to be a little bit better. I wasn't going to add in foods that I knew really caused a reaction for me, but yeah. I was going to, I was going to lessen it up because I was, I was eating just for a long time, uh, a raw vegan diet because wow. I did that for a really long time to try to clean myself out to get rid of Lyme disease and it, it didn't work. But yeah. even adding back in cooked foods and like meat and just like good carbs and stuff like that, that was what I really needed at the time. So. Have you, did you ever read like the, the medical medium? I did his diet for, yeah. I did his for two years at least <laughs> so yeah i i don't know i i, I kind of think he's a bit of a a, a sham not mm, i i don't know do you think do you think do you agree i i agree i think well, okay what what he tells people to do is he tells them to eat fruits and vegetables right yeah. and buy supplements yeah and you can i mean eat fruits and vegetables we all know to do that yeah and it's like I don't know people go crazy on his his diet and they don't eat fat i didn't eat fat at all for two years i just ate straight potatoes and fruit and ooh, that made me sick but yeah. i thought i was doing the right thing for my body but no i think i 
think his advice is pretty dangerous, actually. Yeah, yeah, ag ag agreed. Um, so, okay, so you, you, you kind of were easier on your diet, which meant you could start having a look more in, in depth into your, like the trauma and that side of things. What did you do next? Okay, so um, at this point, I had kind of let go of being a crazy lady about my diet. And then I was actually able to find a person on Instagram and her name is Abby. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I think it's Ver Vernon or Veron. I don't know how to pronounce it. I, it's, I can send it to you after the podcast if you want, but yeah. she's amazing. She, she does, um, she teaches people about trauma work. And I was really desperate at this point because I was really struggling with fatigue and all the symptoms that I was having. So I just decided to buy her program. And it's, it's a really good introduction to just learn about trauma and how it affects the physical body and how it causes fatigue and what it does to our adrenals and how when every, you know, the organs are affected by trauma and then it causes chronic illness. So yeah. It was really interesting for me to learn. I was like, wow, for all these years, I was focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. I should, I should have been focusing on this because this is what causes illness. So and, it was really interesting. And for, for people who are listening who, so did, I mean, I guess you don't, don't go into like yeah. uh, detail you don't want to go to, but did you have like a, a relatively happy childhood before 13? See, I thought so until I started doing the the work the trauma healing work and somatic work because sometimes we forget things or our mind has a way of hiding these things from us to protect us uh -huh. and I, I started remembering some of the things that happened and I started remembering sexual assaults and all these things that happened to me when I was a, a kid that I didn't even know about and it was it was wow. crazy or things that I didn't want to believe that happened that came to the surface when I started doing the trauma work and that's another important thing why it's, it's good to learn and work slowly with it because sometimes it can be a lot. Yeah. 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 Cause I often think I, I, I had a pretty normal childhood. And so I, I yeah, I don't, I don't know whether I'd have that much trauma, but yeah, maybe I have forgotten things. I often think, yeah. do you think also, do you have to, have you had to work quite heavily on the trauma that you've had since you've had chronic illness as well? Yes. A lot because it causes, it definitely causes PTSD with, being scared of food or when you have like a, a little bit of a symptom yeah it's, it's like you have to remind yourself like oh wait I am a human and sometimes even if I am well I'm still gonna have days where I don't feel well because it's yeah part of being a human so it's it's working through that because it definitely causes a lot of PTSD mm -hmm. and I, I, we talked we talked before we started recording and I, I mentioned to you about brain retraining that's something that keeps coming up on all of these episodes is that is this would you say it's like a form are you trying to retrain your brain in the way it uh views trauma um is that is it like a similar kind of thing or is it very different i think i think brain retraining uh in like somatic experiencing and i think all that's kind of similar um i don't know if what i'm doing counts as brain retraining i know there's some people i know somebody you brought on um i think her name was jennifer maybe jennifer man Yes, she, yeah. she does like those two combined. Oh. And I think I think that it is a little bit different, um, but I think that they both do a similar thing. Right, so okay. It's good to do them both together, yeah. And I, I wonder if maybe for some people, trauma is, is more important and brain retraining. I don't know, maybe, because we're all different, right? Just as you said earlier, like some people can actually get better through diet and supplements um and it's those stories actually that make people like you and I try so much supplements and, and diet yeah because they're like oh it worked for them Maybe yeah. it worked for me. but the funny thing is I'm finding when you have trauma and a lot of nervous system dysregulation which comes from trauma mm. it doesn't really matter what supplement or diet you eat your body is not compliant unless yeah. you get to the root cause and you know it's just it's it's crazy that some people can just do that and it works for them but yeah yeah unfortunately yeah <laughs> well, I, I guess what it's doing is set, it's setting it's making you know you're developing like an amazing foundation for the future right so it means that you know you don't have to if you did just get better through diet and supplements then it's probably inevitable that you would have got gotten sick again um yeah. and you have to learn the same lessons what um okay so you're you took that um 
what was her name? Sorry, Abby. Uh, yeah. You took her, you took her course uh, and you started to do that work. Um, how much progression did you make doing that? Okay, so at the beginning of her program, I would say that I was, so when I was doing her program, it was like Zoom and I would have to put my, um, my laptop on my bed and I have to lay down because I was so tired. By the end of her program, I did not have that anymore. I did not have fatigue. I was able to work out like it completely changed wow. really quickly. So I want to say it took me about two months. Wow. Of consistently doing stuff. And I could finally, I couldn't even go for walks without being winded. And now I can like go for a jog or wow. more normal things. So it was like, it was a really quick shift. Yeah. Wow. So is this quite, sorry, is this quite recent there? This is like, in, in like how, how, how long ago did you take a course? Um, I want to say, say like six months ago six months ago oh my god yeah. so mm-hmm. and, and and how in terms of your symptoms all of the symptoms you had like what how many do you have remaining like uh like how intense are they on a day-to-day basis yeah so i would say with all the symptoms i've had i want to say at least i've had 70 symptoms maybe even more than that and now i have five five wow and and what are what are those symptoms if you don't mind me asking yeah so right now um i don't have chronic fatigue syndrome anymore but i do have like some times where i do feel a little bit more tired and that's just i think that's normal because you know as a woman cycle around your cycle yes um some like stomach bloating and stuff like that it's really minor things and it's not bad some sometimes skin irritations and things like that um I think what else I was having insomnia as that was a pretty big thing but that's gone now since doing this work and then so yeah it's just like stomach issues a little bit a little bit of PMS really normal things yeah it's just it sounds like sounds like you're just normal basically (laughs) Um, it's still it's still annoying because I want to be to where I want my digestion to be where it's better and like less pain because there there is certain times where I do have quite a bit of pain but um yeah it's it's a lot lot has changed (laughs) but you want more now because you know more um before (laughs) um like if you so many people will be live so many normal people who've never had chronic illness will be living with more symptoms than you have now and uh, at a greater severity because they just think oh well it's not it's i can live with this do you know what i mean whereas you've had to live with something so much more extreme. Um, and now you're, you're, you're realizing, okay, well, I've got rid of that. I can actually, and I talk about this quite a lot on the podcast, just like, okay, I've got this far. I want more now. I want like another yeah. level of health. Is that what you're after? It is. Yeah. Because I want to be able to, I, I will say like, if I do work out intensely, um, I do get hives. That's one symptom that's been really hard. It's like the, mm-hmm. The five original symptoms that I started with have been the hardest to get rid of. And that is like some stomach discomfort. And then hives was a big one too, but those are going to be, those are going to take longer because those are the original ones that I had to get rid of. But to have all those other ones gone is just very hopeful and exciting too. But I definitely, I want, I want to be all the way to where I'm feeling like, okay, I can do anything. And do you, so do 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 you uh, had to work on like detox pathways or doing any of that? Okay, okay, oh, yeah. right. Yeah, I still do. I still do. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Could you could you tell us a little bit about that? What do you do? Yeah. So in the beginning, I was so severely like backed up, like I could not go to the bathroom that I had to do colonics every single week for mm-hmm. I want to say a year, and it was a it was a lot. Wow. It was really uncomfortable to do it that much, and then. And in yeah, it was, it was not fun. Uh, and then to do infrared saunas too, to help open my kidneys and to get me to sweat because I wasn't moving at all with the fatigue that I had. Yeah. So it was like, keeping, my face looked different too. Um, my, I was really swollen where my lymph nodes were and I just didn't look, I just didn't look well at all. And so those were the things that I was doing, but right now to maintain it, I'm just going on walks every day for my lymphatic system, I'm making sure to sweat a bit, whether that's through going in a sauna or again, a walk or maybe a jog. Mm -hmm. And then just making sure that I'm eliminating every day. So making sure, you know, bowel movements are good because that's, that's a really important piece in healing chronic illness. Yeah. So you open. Yeah. 
So you're doing, and it's funny, isn't it? It's like, you're doing what actually you're meant to do as a human being, but a lot of us ignore what we're meant yeah. to do, like sleeping well. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's like, it, it, sorry, what did you say? I said, yeah, it's really important. Yeah, no, it is. I, I, it's like this week, I knew I needed to get better as quickly as possible. And I was like, I, I, had, I knew I had work to do, but I was like, oh, I'm going to, could I force myself to do some work? And I was like, no force yourself to just all you need to do is sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep and that's all if I I just literally just focused on that and it's and it you know it's it it's a natural free thing that we can do and it and it works yeah it works I mean we need we need the basics we need we need sunlight we need good water good food sleep and movement and those are really important things that I think a lot of people let go of at a certain time because it's like life is so busy it's easy to neglect those things right so 100%. 100%. But it's really important to come back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so with Lyme disease now, have you, out of interest, have you been retested just to see whether it's still there? Yes, I have been retested. So when I started doing, uh, right before getting into like somatic work, I had been doing some trauma release, like just playing around with it. And one time I did it and I got really sick and I thought something was wrong. And I had like, I think it was over a month of having a fever and I felt terrible every single day. It was like throwing up and it was just, it was not fun. And I went in the last six, in the last six months or yeah. 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 Yeah, In the last six months. And I honestly believe that was my body getting rid of it because I went and got retested twice and I do not have any trace of Lyme in my symptoms. Wow. That's crazy. Really crazy. (laughs) My kidneys started hurting like my stomach was hurting and it was a, it was a lot a lot was going on and I was like okay this is not good this something's wrong but I honestly believe that that was when my body got rid of it because I, I had neck pain a lot with Lyme on the right side and it does not exist anymore and it, it stopped after that weird bout of like releasing things it was crazy I even used to have like paralysis from my neck and it's like nothing is wrong with my neck anymore it's crazy my neck's in so much pain at the moment and that's all (laughs) no no it's not so much pain but it is it's just right now it's giving me a lot uh, because of this week um that's crazy what what were you actually what so just talk me through what were you actually doing in that 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 you were doing a lot of release work at at that time yeah so I definitely should have been uh getting I really say that you need to see a, a therapist for doing this like a somatic therapist but there's there's certain things like trauma releasing exercises and um it's some of it's like shaking i don't know if you've heard of that but it's it's like you you set yourself up in a way it's there's videos on youtube but it's to release trauma it naturally because animals discharge trauma from their system by shaking so you naturally get your body to shake and it can it can release stress and tension and there's other parts of trauma release that have nothing to do with shaking at all but this is what happened after i did that that shaking the trauma release exercise that I tried. And that was just a YouTube search. <laughs> wow. But I, I still have been doing um, like somatic things and that was really helpful. And that's the groundwork that I think everybody needs, but doing that seemed to really help me, but I'm not going to recommend that to anybody without a therapist because I don't want that, anything to happen. Yeah. I mean, you, you could have done so much work before that no matter yeah. what the next thing was going to be, it could have, forced it to do uh, what what happened yeah. right? um yeah, no. mm-hmm. I, I think it's so uh motivating and just amazing to hear someone recover through completely like natural means uh and you you weren't you know yes you had the help of others but and i know you had to pay some money uh i, I don't i'm not talking about the the shitload of other money you've already spent but the <laughs> The, the, the st- and I think it's just really empowering that you can, with little money and with something that is chronic, like when people hear chronic Lyme, I think they get really scared that you were able to, to, to be in the position that you're in today. Is that, do you feel like that's a really empowering, it's a really empowering feeling you must have? It is. Yeah. It's, I thought I was going to have to take antibiotics in the end and just be stuck on that and just have to take something forever. And that was really discouraging, but I mean, our bodies really are designed to heal. We just yeah. have to get out of its way sometimes. Absolutely. Um, 
so you you are the definition of a someone who's come back from rock bottom like you were you know as, as horrible as it sounds you know you were there you were almost ready to end your life uh and you came back from that which is, is amazing there will be people listening to this who there may be some people unfortunately listening to this who are at that point uh or maybe not at that point but just i just feel very hopeless what would be your advice to them uh, at that at this stage in order to get them to you know, to keep going, to keep moving forward. Yeah, it's it really comes down to you have to believe that you're going to heal because you are going to heal. There's there's no reason that you're not going to heal. It's going to happen. And sometimes it can feel like it's going to take a long time. There was times within the last six months where I thought I wasn't I wasn't going to get better. And I, I thought I was just going to be, you know, stuck and doing, even though I wasn't doing antibiotics, stuck on supplements, stuck on you know, controlling my diet so much, but you really have to hold on to the belief that you're going to heal because you are going to no matter what and be gentle with yourself above anything and be compassionate for yourself because you've been through so much and you just, you need to just give yourself some love right now. It's what yeah. we need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and what would you say, like, you know, it's only very recently that you've I mean, how, how do you feel now out of interest? You sometimes wake up and think, I can't quite believe I'm in this situation now compared to how I was a year ago. Yeah, it's, it's crazy just to even wake up because now waking up, I can wake up and feel alert. But before I was like, I felt like I got hit by a bus and I was on a, like having a hangover for a couple of days when I wake up. So it just feels really good to wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I'm alive. <laughs> like I can I can notice the things around me I my vision is clear and yeah. just to have that, that little thing and just to feel that that sense of safety in my body feels really good and what how would you say your life is better now as a result as as, a, a, as to what you've been uh, let's say you've never been through what you've been through uh and you know your life went one way and your life went this way and you had to go through all the the shit that you've had to go through, but you're on the other side of it now. How is your life better as a result, would you say? I would say if I hadn't gone through this, I would definitely be a a different person. Um, This this definitely showed me that I really want to help people with chronic illness. And I think before this, I was honestly a really shallow little 14 year old girl that didn't care about anything important other than herself. And I didn't like the person I was back then. And I'm really glad that I went through that, even though it was painful. It, it broke me down, but it broke me down the best way. It helped me find compassion and love for other people and showed me what I want to do with my life. So I'm really thankful. Amazing. And, and so what, what, are, what are your plans now? You said you're, uh, you want to help other people. Is that, do you want to help other people in the same way that, you know, that you got better? Is that what you're, is that what you're doing? Yeah, I was, I was pretty confused as to what I wanted to do for a while. I am a health coach, a certified health coach. And, I just, I knew I wanted to help people with their health, but I wasn't really sure what road I was going to go down, whether it was going to be focusing on diet or what, but I found I really want to help people in both aspects. So kind of opening up those elimination organs and at the same time working on trauma, because I think those two go hand in hand with chronic illness specifically. So I definitely want to have a coaching program eventually, or just, just share my story and help people whatever way I can, honestly just to help people. Cause I know how, how painful that is mentally to be stuck in that situation. So. Awesome. Um, so uh, could you repeat, so the, could you actually share with me after the episode, just so we can include it in the show notes, the, the course of, uh, the lady that you, you did to, that helped you. Yeah. That'd be okay. Um, yeah. cause I'm pretty sure people will want to, if you could just email that over to me, that would, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I think it's amazing that, um, we're speaking so soon after you've, you know, you've made your, you know, uh, you know, you've gone through your healing. I feel like it's a, a you know, really cool to speak to you so soon after it. It's truly inspiring for someone like me still going through it. So uh, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I'm really excited to get it out to people. But yeah, thank you for so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was so great to meet you. No worries. Oh, sorry. If people want to connect with you, how, how would they do that? Uh, how is the best way for them to do that? Um, they can message me on Instagram. Um, it's just holistic Nikki or right, holistic period Nikki, but it's holistic with a W. Okay, yeah. cool. And for those of you out, so I, I didn't realize that when you say period, you're 
you're talking about the the dot, right? Yeah, the period. We we yeah, call, not, them, not we call period, them full stops. We call them yeah. full stops. I was I was on I was on a Zoom call with someone this week, and he said he said uh, click the period button, and I was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and I was like, I, I was saying this is a full stop, and he was like, what? Yeah, we. <laughs> It was a bit of a funny change. Uh, cool. Well, I, once again, thanks so much for coming on. And uh, yeah, really excited to, to get this out to everyone. Thank you so much.